So now we will turn to the question and answer portion of today's presentation. If you have a question, uh, please write it in the chat. If you wish to address it to a particular presenter, uh, please do so uh, by typing that information into the chat. Uh, we will cover as many of them as we can. While you do that, I will ask a question that hopefully will be informative to many of them. Uh, this question is for Dr. Vera. And the question is, how do ME-CFS and or long COVID patients who are interested in exploring the functional medicine approach to their care and symptom management, identify or find a competent provider and be able to access such care? Thank you for that question. I think it's very important. Um, I am giving the organizers a lot of resources, information on organizations that uh, have lists of providers that can help with those uh, cases. Uh, one of them is the Institute for Functional Medicine, uh, where I train. If you go to their website, there's a section that says find a provider. And in that you can look by your location, but also what kind of expertise these uh, providers have. That is helpful. Uh, also the Osher Collaborative of Integrative Medicine is a group of uh, academic institutions that have clinics who have and use an integrative and whole medicine approach that you can also go to their website and find if there are some of those closer to your area. Uh, the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine, AIHM, it's also another big organization that trains and have uh, access to many providers that could be not just clinicians, physicians, or, or nurse practitioners, but also uh, all the other uh, integrative medicine modalities that also has on their website a section to find providers that are close in your area. Some of them will have information about the insurances that these uh, providers accept, or if they have access to telemedicine appointments. And one big uh, component that I also found out recently is the, uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs in the United States has a whole, something called a whole health initiative. And there are several clinics that have already implement, they are implementing, they have clinics for post COVID cases specifically, but also have this uh, integrative modality where they will cover evaluation with chiropractors, acupuncturists and uh, nutritionists, uh, but it, it, it varies by location. So you can also go to that website for the, a VA whole health initiative that also will be part of the resources. More specifically for uh, mast cell activation and dysautonomia, which are two big areas that are overlap uh, in, in this uh, MECFS and post COVID conditions. Uh, the mast cell disease society, the, you had some information from the graphics I, I put in the presentation, but you also have a link in the resources. They also have been very actively educating providers and they have a lot of information for resources and providers that are listed there also have experience evaluating these conditions. And lastly, for autonomic dysfunction, there uh, is this Autonomia International is a big uh, advocate organization that has offers a lot of resources for patients with list providers as well. And the American Autonomic Society also has a link for providers who are trained specifically for autonomic dysfunction. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, there are multiple questions here on how people can get in touch with you, Dr. Vera. So I'm not sure how you wish to handle that question. Uh, the easiest way is uh, if they can go to the, uh, my current clinic is the whole psychiatry uh, center. And um, if you go to the website, there is a section for new patients who want more information. You can complete your information and then our staff will get back to you. I think that's the easiest way. Okay. Um, one thing that I can think of, but I have to clear it with the powers that be in the email that goes out to um, participants of this meeting. Um, announcing that the recording is available, perhaps we could also include contact information. So if the 
powers that be are willing to do that, we can, we can also include that as well. Another popular question seems to be about medications and MECFS. So I'm wondering if you can comment upon those medications that you feel are most effective for which symptoms in MECFS? Well, that's a complex question. Um, as I said, you know, my experience has been when I started my journey, I started seeing patients with MECFS. I was very focused on immune dysfunction and using antivirals. And I found that they could be very helpful for a group of people, but doesn't work on everybody. So now what I do is I start first, I think it's important to gather information and see what systems are affected and see if there's a common cause. So for example, uh, some cases I have uh, had patients who had exposure to mold at some point in their lives, maybe not now, but they have issues with autonomic dysfunction, muscle activation, immune issues. And if we are able to identify that and we can help them you know, remove that exposure, then you can work on all the other aspects as well. So it depends. It is not, unfortunately, as I said, it's not, uh, I would love to have a recipe. And actually that's part of some of the research initiatives that are happening right now to try to see if we can find common groups uh, in between the diagnosis of MECFS that they respond specifically, if we can predict who can respond to a specific intervention. So what I would say is first, you need to gather information. And the second part, what I do as well, and also some of my colleagues that have this uh, experience with uh, whole health approaches, is that I also try to prioritize because even though if we have, let's say an example, uh, Epstein-Barr virus activation that is very active, sometimes I cannot start with the antiviral from the beginning because the patient is so inflamed that if I try to use an antiviral and I have done at the beginning, they will crash because there's so much inflammation happening. So then sometimes it's just, I need to start, usually it's work on the nutrients because I see a lot of deficiencies and sometimes we don't expect for that, but being able to replace nutrients, work on, on your gut health as well, making sure that the, the, the symptoms are stable, there's no inflammation, you're absorbing those nutrients uh, because if the gut is inflamed, even if you take medications, you may not have the benefit because you are actually not absorbing as well and also managing stress. That also has been another big factor as well. So when we discuss uh, in my presentation, ideally is you work on the prioritize what could have the most impact and could be you know, something that your patient can tolerate. And then you work your way up until you get, you eventually get to the viruses and you get, eventually get to other factors, but it depends on the patient. And that's the difficult part, I think, because it would be helpful to have and tell you, this is my recipe. I don't have one. I go, you know, depending on what I find on the testing and the story from the patient, I identify the what can we work on and then just do it step by step. Okay, so there are now more questions concerning your practice. Um, are you open to new patients? Do you know how patients outside of the United States uh, can access your care? Um, and do you see patients for illnesses other than MECFS and long COVID? Um, it will depend on the ability the patients that they have to come to an in-person visit in Maryland because that is the requirement. If they are able to come for an initial visit and have you know, the evaluation and the testing, I can do telemedicine for certain states and for certain uh, countries as well. I do speak Spanish, so I also can see patients who are Spanish speakers. And as I mentioned, um, and my main focus has been is in immune dysfunction and dysautonomia, uh, my expertise as well. So I focus mostly on those two areas. The Resources I, I'm providing uh, also, especially for the Institute for Functional Medicine, there's a lot of more providers uh, training abroad as well. So the patients will have access to some of those, hopefully locally, um, providers locally that can uh, be able to help. Are there lists of overseas providers um, yes. available? Yeah. Yeah, in many of the institutions I'm mentioning, uh, there's uh, national, but also international providers. Okay. 
Uh, there's a question about gut inflammation. Is there a test for gut inflammation or how do you determine that there is gut inflammation? It will um, depend on how much, uh, yes, there are some tests that we can do. I would start first with symptoms, um, especially if uh, patients have issues with uh, nausea or reflux or pain in the abdomen, especially after eating or diarrhea, constipation. And there are some studies that you can do in specialty labs that can measure um, the amount of balance of the good bacteria, the bad kind of bacteria, if there's yeast overgrowth or if there's malabsorption. There are some blood tests as well that you can do to evaluate um, the permeability of the lining in the, in the intestine like Sonulin, for example, that is also available. Most of them are uh, as part of the specialty labs. Okay. And there is uh, interest in managing sleep. So beside trying to improve your sleep hygiene, what would be the functional medicine approach toward improving sleep for ME-CFS or long COVID patients? The idea would be to evaluate some tests, for example, uh, hormone testing can help, cortisol imbalance, especially if you have a high cortisol going into bedtime, can point you, and there are some supplements and some um, medications you can use to help with that. Uh, also, there are certain nutrients, for example, magnesium is a simple one I mentioned before. Uh, ideally, you first measure to make sure because it can be uh, a problem if it's uh, too high, but magnesium uh, before going to bed is also another option. There's different kinds of magnesiums um, that have different kinds of absorption. So magnesium threonate, for example, is one that can be helpful, doesn't cause diarrhea, but can help with sleep. As uh, cysteine is also another one. Uh, there are other nutrients as well uh, that help with balance of stress like uh, or herbs, like ashwagandha, um, phosphatidyl, uh, Fosatile searing that can help to balance, but ideally would be if cortisol is a concern, then ideally would be to have a measurement to know because some patients may have symptoms that could go either with high or low levels. And if you use the incorrect supplement or medication, that can cause problems. Okay, one area we haven't covered is payment. So, um, what insurances um, will cover um, the cost of your care or how do patients manage to get you paid? Uh, at this moment uh, in my practice is a cash based practice. Uh, so there's uh, no coverage with insurances, but as I mentioned, the Institute for Functional Medicine and some of these other uh, have at least when you look for providers that they will include, uh, there, are, there are some clinicians that accept insurances, especially if it's an academic institution. For example, like um, the ones I mentioned in the Osher Collaborative, a lot of those bigger institutions have uh, con con contracts with insurances so they can uh, get some of the tests done through insurances and most of the appointments and follow-ups and even health coaches um, as well that can be covered. So. There are some options and I understand and that, you know, it's a little challenging from the clinician perspective because reimbursement with some of these uh, evaluations um, is not ideal. So that's why most, uh, a lot of the, uh, providers who work in integrative medicine field opt for a cash pay uh, model, but there are also uh, now more awareness and more institutions that are uh, using that approach as well. So it will be a matter of investigating what is available closer in your area because there are some that will take insurance and you can start at least you know, with basic evaluations and interventions. Yeah, I think that as long COVID becomes more of a problem, um, there will be easier payment for that. And then hopefully groups such as uh, Mass MECFS, FM Association and NJMECFSA can advocate for inclusion of uh, MECFS as well. And as you have indicated, and I would encourage you as well as other clinicians to try and attempt to document that the symptoms are very similar and the uh, treatment of those symptoms are very similar 
so that we can assure that uh, both diseases move forward together um, and not one be distinguished from the other in terms of the kinds of care or treatment that is uh, available um, to them. There is a question of concern um, that um, some physicians may say that they uh, subscribe to the biopsychosocial philosophy of ME CFS treatment, but are really not holistic or functional medicine in their approach uh, to ME CFS. And so there is a concern of uh, one or more patients in our audience that wants to know how they can be assured that they will be getting the kind of care that you are describing? It depends on, um, definitely that's where it comes, the empowering and advocating for yourself. Ideally, we'll, you will have different access, but the whole idea is that you look for somebody who is not just focusing on one thing. Like you just think, you know, this is the one diagnosis and the one treatment but it's also exploring other diagnoses. Sometimes, you know, I had to train a lot to be able to understand, and I still, a lot that I need to learn. Uh, in, there's new research coming up to evaluate and treat certain conditions. So not everybody has the time to keep up to date or keep training all these factors, but the idea would be uh, finding somebody or discussing with your doctor, just thinking, okay, I have this diagnosis, but what else are we looking into? What else are we addressing? What else? or you have other symptoms in other organs, is it related to that diagnosis? That Does that diagnosis explain all the symptoms you have or the treatment that you are doing for that is helping with all the symptoms you have? It is not, then discuss with your doctor or sometimes, you know, they will know, they may refer you to a nutritionist or another uh, health uh, worker that can help you uh, deal with some specific aspect. So that's the whole idea. And, you know, in an ideal world, we will have all these care teams where you have all these providers involved. Some of these institutions, especially the academic ones, are working on having that approach and have access to these therapies and uh, these other healthcare members. But it's mainly on if you feel that what they are, the treatment that you're receiving is addressing all your concerns. If it's not, ask your doctor, or if not, ask if he can refer you to somebody else who may know a little more about that. Sometimes you may, have, you may have your primary care as the coordinator, and then you will have different specialists. Not everybody, some of these uh, specialists that deal with autonomic dysfunction, they may not know about other areas, but if they can help you with that aspect and you come back to your main clinician and coordinate the care with other doctors, that's also another uh, alternative. Okay, I think we're about out of time. I think we have covered most of the questions um, that, that have been asked. So I want to thank Dr. Vera and Kaylee for their presentations. Uh, the I want to remind you that the recording session will be posted on the Mass MECFS YouTube channel within a few days, and we will send an email out about that. Um, for July, Sunday Conversations is going to take a vacation but we are planning a special program in August and we will send out more information to all registrants about that upcoming event, which will be on August 21st of this year. If you have any ideas for future programs or speakers uh, for this series, please email events at massmecfs.org again. For suggestions for future programs or speakers, please email events at mecfs.org. Sunday Conversations is not intended to be a series of research presentations, but rather this series is to provide a variety of practical information for patients and families, which we believe, and hopefully you will tell us, you want so if you would like some input and would like to participate in being a team member of Sunday Conversations, please email to a different address. If you want to be part of the Sunday Conversations team, 
please email volunteer at, me, at massmecfs.org. Again, if you wish to volunteer, please send an email to volunteer at massmecfs.org. We are working on the fall schedule now, so if you wish to have input, please let us know. Finally, if you have found this program useful, worthwhile, you can help us by making a donation online to either organization, MassME or NJME CFS Association. Both organizations have ways of making online donations. If you feel you can help in some other way, uh, you might consider becoming a member of either organization, or you can volunteer your time. If you don't have a particular job in mind or particular topic with which you wish to help, but just have the ability to volunteer in general, contact the organization of your choice, and I'm sure that we will be able to identify a task that you can do to assist the organizations in their work. And so with that, I would like to thank all the participants. Uh, and I would like to thank all of, the, all of the audience who has tuned in. Remember, we hope to see you on August 21st. And with that, I want to wish you good health, stay safe, try and get a little enjoyment in your life because that lifts your spirits. I know it is a difficult time during a pandemic, but hopefully we will all see you again on the 21st. Thank you very much.